Hi, this is Friday the 28th of October 2022. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening to the Democratic Alliance Labour Report, our weekly Labour Report. If you like this, please send this on, share it with friends, I would appreciate that. We're going to talk about the civil servants again today. We're going to talk about directors' personal responsibility, uh, the post office and their problems over there. We'll speak about Donnell, some load shedding, the sugar industry, and of course, the budget that we've just had. So thank you for tuning in. It's Michael Bagram. I'm the Labour spokesperson for the Democratic Alliance. And just a reminder that if you are happy with this, please share it. It's Friday, the 28th of October 2022. Well, first of all, the civil servants, uh, they've applied to go on strike. Uh, we suspect there will be a strike, strike about maybe uh, Wednesday next week. Um, it's going to be one hell of a strike if you think about it, because already about a quarter of a million civil servants have suggested that they want to go on strike. Uh, so it'll be interesting and a little bit more about that just now in this report, but it'll be interesting to, to see where it takes us. Uh, what's interesting, what has happened is Mr. Coco, who was the ESCOM director, the senior director, um, has been arrested. He's out on bail. Uh, but it shows you that at least we're getting a little bit of movement. And I'm very pleased uh, that despite the government's reluctance to follow the Zondo Commission's recommendations, at least we're seeing something come out of that. But there is a personal responsibility for the individuals. They can't hide behind uh, the organization. Uh, we've known this for a long time that uh, directors are responsible um, if they act irresponsibly and if they act criminally. So they become responsible as well. The big story is, of course, still the problems that we're seeing with the state-owned enterprises. The ANC government has literally destroyed every single state-owned enterprise and most of the government departments as well. But the interesting one now that we've just seen um, is the post office. Now, the post office has been failing for years. I mean, I don't know if anyone listening to this has actually received a letter for years. Uh, I haven't, other than uh, the city of Cape Town sending me some letter. I don't know how they get that through, but they do. The post office didn't get any bailouts um, on this budget, which is also interesting and probably quite rightly so. But what's important over there is that the post office owes about 4.3 billion rand. Um, from what I understand is they've been deducting medical aid from all their staff, but not paying it over to the medical aid. So when people fall ill, they're completely exposed because the medical aid have got no funds and they're not prepared to um, service any of the staff. Now, not only is this criminal and disgusting, it's immoral and it is absolutely typical of an ANC government. Now, I can tell you now, I can assure you that when a DA government comes into power, that's one thing that will never happen. They will never do something as stupid fraudulent and immoral as what the ANC government has done. I cannot actually believe in these circumstances this has happened. Now, people are saying to me, well, I should believe it because the ANC itself doesn't treat their own staff properly. I mean, they deduct from the, the salaries, the pension monies that aren't paid over to the pension fund. They deduct medical aid that aren't paid over to the medical aid. They deduct PAYE that's not paid over to receive the revenue. They deduct UIF that's not paid to the UIF. This is typical of an ANC government. It's typical of the ANC itself. Now, the Democratic Alliance gives you an absolute undertaking that if it's not their money, they will pay it over to whoever is responsible to administer that money. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense at all. Now, if anyone in the private sector did this, they'd be in jail within weeks. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So what we're seeing now is a complete crippling of the country. Uh, the country itself is being crippled because of a completely incompetent, fraudulent and disgusting state of affairs. And it's all run by the ANC. It doesn't make any sense to anyone standing outside. I mean, if you're going to steal money, 
steal money that might not be traced back to you. Do something that has got a little bit, even a, a smidgen of intelligence to it. But here what we've got is a post office deducting money from the staff. So it shows in everyone's pay slips, hundreds of employees, and then not paid over to the medical aid. Did they think that would uh, somehow be covered up? Did they think the medical aid would continue paying and not tell anyone? It, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever to even a fool wouldn't be able to do something as silly as that. But yes, we've had the ANC government do it. Donnell, the same thing. They've been deducting monies from their staff and not paying it over to the relevant sources. I, I, and the mind boggles. Donnell used to be a world-class institution. Used to make millions and millions of foreign currency for our South African government. What has happened? The ANC government has destroyed it. It's not even on its knees, it's flat out. It, it shouldn't exist even. That's how bad Donnell is. I don't understand it, but we have that same story for the SOEs. Now, it can't, it can't be true that our president keeps saying, I'm shocked, but he is shocked again. And this is a president that should be shocked forever. Um, they should shock him out of existence. It doesn't make any sense. Well, we've got the load shedding. Well, load shedding goes to job shedding. And again, we're going to see this till kingdom come. Remember, President Ramaphosa in 2015, as the vice president, said it will be fixed up, his word, in 18 months. That was in 2015. Well, we're now in 2022, right at the end of 2022, seven years later. What happened to the 18 months? Maybe someone should actually uh, shock the president again and say 18 months expired six years ago. But no, we still have the load shedding. Well, the sugar industry are now on its knees as well. No help from the government at all. 26,000 employees at risk, another 20,000 cane growers at risk. Again, an industry that should have been very carefully nurtured by our government has not been getting any help whatsoever. They're just going to leave it and let it sink. It doesn't make sense at all. And then you will understand that what happened um, in our budget speech on Wednesday, no help from, at all from uh, the government to the industries that really needed help. And then they unilaterally implemented a 3% increase to the civil servants. Now that's going to irritate any civil servants. And it has. And it's silly. And this is typical of an INC government once again. The DA would negotiate properly with the unions, would consult properly with the unions, and only budget the, after that consultation. What an ANC government does is that they budget and then afterwards pretend to consult. And then when the consultation takes a bit too long, they then unilaterally implement. Make sense? Well, it doesn't at all. That's typical of what we're living through. So thank you for listening to me. It's Michael Bagram, Friday, the 28th of October, 2022, on behalf of the Democratic Alliance. Thank you.